This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Artie! And guess. Before we start this episode of Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations, Marty, would you like to give us a recap on what you remember happened in um, the case? <laughs> um, okay, uh, from the entire beginning? Just, just, just from the past, from the past um, like, recording session. So we, uh... Do you remember followed, where we, we are? We followed a suitcase into the special room where the, wait the, um... Oh my gosh, the flight attendants sleep. And then they were like, oh, is that your suitcase? She's like, uh-huh, no, no. And then, like, they're like, oh, we need the key. And then the key was gone, and Von Karma was like, uh -huh, that means you're the murderer. And then they uh, went into the basement, and the guy jumped off the roof, or the stairs, the stairs, <laughs> and then <laughs> didn't die. But they were like, maybe that's how the guy died. And then we found something under the tarp. Uh, the tarp? Is that yeah. what you call it? Yeah. Sure. The, the tarp was underneath the statue, so they're like, ha! Th that means that it had to be loaded on after. And then we went into darkness. Where did we go? I don't remember where uh, we, we went after we're, that. We learned where it's like, oh, he probably died before the plane left Zane Fa. And then they're like, wait a second. Cammy Meal, the narcoleptic flight attendant, said that he, she oh, saw right, him afterwards. Right. <laughs> That's probably a lie. That's pretty weird. And so, yeah, we're on the end, part two. The end? Oh no, but the and the end. Oh look, speaking of narcolepsy, March 12th, 3.35 p.m., flight I-390, lower deck cargo hold. Miss Meal? Uh, Miss Meal? Uh, Do you recall what you said earlier? About when you answered some service calls as we were departing from Zane Fa? Uh, you said that Mr. Hicks was sitting in his seat at that time. However, that is simply not possible. Because Mr. Hicks was dead long before we ever touched down in Zane Fa. Oh. Uh, Miss Cammy Meal? Um, maybe I didn't see what I thought I did? No one could make a mistake so large, Miss Meal. Um, but I make that kind of boo-boo all the time. Wait. Oh. I just realized, okay, I think in the past I'm like, she's like an adult peppermint patty because of her, like, sweet patterns. No, 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 no. She's, she's like, um, Karen from Harvest Moon 64, but she left town to be a dancer. Oh, that didn't work she out. Looks like that, that didn't work out. She does so she became like a flight her. attendant instead and got a narcolepsy problem. Oh, she does kind of look like Karen. <laughs> this is going nowhere. There must be so a better way of resolving this contradiction. Very well. Miss Meal, if you would please tell me about your alibi during the time span from just before we were to land at 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. when the body was found. Are you telling me I'm a suspect, uh, Mr. Edgeworth? I almost called him Dr. Edgeworth. She's just sleeping It's on. just a testimony of nothing but like... She looks like the Lorax. You think, like, everything looks like the Lorax. It has a lot of hair. It's the Lorax. Or, like, I don't know. What's that, like... All I can think oh, of is, a, is a hairy chair. I don't know. A, what, there was a sh what, I don't know what I'm saying. Never mind. Uh, oh, um, yeah. From three to four, I was um in the flight attendant's room all by my lonesome self. Uh, oh, um, yeah. Um, you might want to get on some medication for that, or like. People need to stop. <laughs> Maybe the pilot's just like, Cammy, baby, I need you on every flight. It's like, can I get some sleep? No. Oh. <laughs> and from five to six, I was um, in the flight attendant's room all by my lonesome self. You were just sitting in the flight attendant's room doing nothing for three hours? <laughs> three hours? And not sleeping, might I add? How is a man supposed to react to a testimony like that? Miss Meal, wake up. Ah! <sighs> she fell asleep again. It looks like the only way I'm going to be able to wake her up is by pressing her. This is literally like my junior year. <laughs> of high school. I, of high school. Literally, like, half of my... Actually, no. Almost all of my junior year, I was completely down on sleep. <laughs> and so, whenever people would talk to me, I'd be like... Huh? Like, not even <laughs> responding. So basically what I'm learning, Cammy needs to stop drooling. She needs to get on a proper sleep cycle. And she needs to stop using so much whitening toothpaste. Yeah. Oh, and she needs to button up her shirt. Yeah, what you've been saying the whole time. 
Miss Meal, wake up. Uh, I'm awake, I'm awake. Have we seen her yawn yet? <sighs> Miles Edgeworth, I demand that you do something about this flight attendant this is instant. Why ask me to wake her when you can finally put that whip to an appropriate use? From the floor, I was in the flight attendant's room. If I remember correctly, food was being served in first class and the lounge between the hours of 3 and 4 a.m. Yeah, but that kind of stuff's run by Miss Rhoda. Then what were you doing in the attendance room at that time? Eating, and then having the most delicious dream. You mean you were neglecting your duties? No way! Sleeping's part of our job too, you know. Speaking of which... Uh, oh, yeah. Miss Meal, how many times do I have to repeat myself? Wake up! Ouch! Why did you whip me, sir? <laughs> Ooh, what did I miss? A poor detective being on the receiving end of a lash in your stead. Really? <laughs> Sorry about that. You can make amends for that by continuing with your testimony. From five to six? I was, I was still in the uh... flight attendant's room. <laughs> so you were alone the entire time, were you? Yeah, no one even popped their head in to say hi. Oh? Well, I think a contradiction just popped in to say hi. What should I do? Should I raise an objection? A contradiction? A raise an objection? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, dang it. Maybe not yet. She hasn't exactly given me much to object to yet, after all. <laughs> what did I miss? There we go. There's her yawning animation. <laughs> Finally awake, are we? What do you mean? I've been awake this whole time. Your cami voice is perfect. <laughs> Aw, it's alright if you were sleeping, pal. Pay no mind to the scruffy detective beside you and wake up. Yeah! Hurry up and wake up, Miss Meal! Enough with the clowning around. This is my show and I will resolve the contradictions as I see fit. I think the only female that, um, uh, that Von Karma has whipped has been Lada. And Eni. Eni? Did she whip Eni? She whipped Eni. Oh, okay. Especially towards the end. Toward the end, probably, because she's like, oh my gosh, Eni, you are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Meal, there is a clear contradiction embedded in your testimony. Huh? What are you talking about? It's not possible that you were alone in the attendance room the whole time from 5 to 6 a.m. What, was the other chick in there? Oh, was the movie being shown then? In the flight attendant's room. Not in the flight attendant's room. No, on the deck. The deck? I, I don't know. Uh, that was from 6 to 8. Oh, never mind. Who went live on Twitch? Bullet Bill Time went live on what? Twitch. Go no. follow Bullet Bill Time. <laughs> okay, I don't even know what they are playing. I don't either, it just said What do live. they normally play? I saw one Mario Maker stream. He played my really? level. Oh, that's cool. Take okay. That. Uh, now take a look at this eye-opening piece of evidence. Did you know what movie was being shown? Uh, it was Planes Free. It was the worst. <laughs> Miss Mio, I need you to wake up and take a look at this. Enough of your foolishness. Now hurry up and show us the real evidence. Ah! I guess this wasn't as eye-opening as I thought. <laughs> Smack just herself. Slaps himself. Oh, did you say something? Finally awake, are we? What do you mean? I've been awake this whole time. Oh. Is it because of the suitcase not being there? Wait, just check every testimony. Did, uh, the... <laughs> he was in his seat when we took off at 5 a.m. Uh, the, the bot an in-flight shop and left in attendance room- oh! 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 Okay. I wonder if you would be so kind as to take a look at this receipt, Miss Meal. Huh? A receipt? For what? It's for the suitcase Miss Tenero bought. Now if I may direct your attention to the timestamp. As you can see, it clearly says 5.40 a.m. Miss Tenero. Yes! Huh? Why is the killer here? I thought you'd have her locked up by now. I requested that she be present as a witness so that we may straighten out your complex lie. Now then, Miss Tenero, between the hours of 5 and 6 a.m., you took a trip from first class down to the first floor in-flight shop, correct? 
Yes, I went to the shop to buy a suitcase. After which I went straight to the attendance room to drop it off. And did you see Miss Meal there at the time? Um, no. So, Miss Meal, where were you really between the hours of 5 and 6 a.m.? Like, I was with the pilot because he likes me. Miss Cammy Meal! Uh, uh, the bathroom? I'll be the one to ask the questions here. Yeah, maybe that's it. I probably just missed her. Nature calls, you know. Do you take me for a fool? There's That's a little too convenient for to be For an entire true. hour in the bathroom. No. It's a really bad bathroom break. I don't even want to know. Yeah, But I also, know. no, it's like, she... Tenero brought the suitcase in for at yeah, like 5.45 or something. Right, right. And then left. So it's just like, I was in the bathroom during that. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's the truth. Cross my heart. Hmm. I don't have enough conclusive proof to counter-argue her at this stage. You don't believe me, do you? But please, won't you give me a chance and hear me out? Now she's awake. Reason for suspicion. Look, I know you're suspecting me because I'm one of the crew, but you think that maybe you should also suspect Miss Rhoda too? She's the one in charge of the elevator key card in the shop, you know? If you ask me, that makes her super suspicious. Enough of that whitening toothpaste. <laughs> there are no cracks in your teeth or it's gaps. Like that, yeah, it's like that Frogstraw comic. We already mentioned yep, that earlier. Yep. Please leave Miss Tenero out of the conversation. Only you are under suspicion for now. Well, I don't get it. Why are you covering for Miss Rhoda all of a sudden? Oh, now I get it. Maybe you've got your eye on Miss Rhoda. Of course I'm keeping an eye on her. I can't very well let her escape, can I? Never mind. But you want to know something? Miss Rhoda actually kind of let... I have absolutely no interest in people who can't appreciate my sense of design. Now is not the time for this sort of talk. Von Carver's just dead silent. Uh, I just, I think that maybe she's suspicious, you know? <laughs> I mean, she is suspicious, but so are you. <laughs> no, it's not the only reason I have for suspecting you. Your statements regarding Mr. Hicks also turned out to be a bunch of lies. Ah, uh, but say I wasn't an attendant. You wouldn't suspect me then, would you? Hmm, yes. I suppose that's true enough. She's like, I'm just faking being an attendant. I just bought this outfit and I was cosplaying. <laughs> she, it, she, she, bought, she bought a flight attendant's outfit, but like she didn't buy the right one. She bought like the Halloween like sexy, sexy flight, flight attendant. attendant outfit. That's why she can't book him. <laughs> She's like, hey, so uh, Rhoda, can I just be a flight attendant for a day? She's like, it's um, my birthday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's That's why she didn't do any work because she doesn't she didn't like do know any work how. She doesn't know how. And she's, she's just, just like, like in the hey, flight attendant's room watching planes free, drinking tea. Just like, this no, is no, the she best. was with the pilot though, too. Because the pilot was like, oh my gosh, baby, you're great. No wonder she's, she's wearing like, the sexy right, flight she's attendant. Like, I'm the Halloween sexy costume. flight attendant this year. <laughs> this year. <laughs> Who next knows year, what? Next year, I'm a sexy nurse. <laughs> <laughs> and she accidentally kills 14 patients. Or patients. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than purposefully killing 14 patients. <laughs> Got the medications wrong. She's already being detained for further questioning, or have you already forgotten? Oh, yeah, I guess I just forgot. Cammy, don't tell me you suspect me too. Sorry, can't help it. I mean, other than you, there's no one else who could have done it. I can't believe you would think that. I mean, me? A killer? Miss Meal, what did you mean just now by no one else who could have done it? <laughs> She's the only one in charge of the elevator keycard and shop, and the pilot could definitely not have turned the plane on pilot pilot mode and flew into turbulence. Flew into turbulence? <laughs> <laughs> Siri, where's the nearest turbulence? The nearest turbulence is in 20 feet to the right. It <laughs> takes like a microsecond Never in an mind. airplane. The nearest is, takes 100 feet. In that would also take like a microsecond in an One airplane. One mile. <laughs> that would take like a few seconds. No, take, no that, a mi to travel a mile is at least 30 seconds. In an airplane? Yeah. Maybe. Probably. Uh, I don't really know. Well, I just flew magic. on an airplane. And they were like, oh, you're you're making your descent soon. And then like, I'm watching the map and it's like, oh, you're 50 miles. Oh, Check out Edger's miles. face here. He's just like, I am so, so unamused. And what are you in charge of, Miss Meal? I'm in charge of taking naps. 
Um, I take care of the flight attendant's room. That doesn't count! Aw, but I spend so much time in there. It might as well be my responsibility. Mr. Edgeworth, Cammie is very talented in languages. So she assists passengers who may not speak English. Especially those who speak Borginian. She's the only one on this flight who's fluent. Oh, you mean that kind of what am I in charge of? Why didn't you say so in the first place? What else could I have meant? Yeah, so I'm really good at Borginian. She's fluent in Borginian. Then I suppose you're in charge of processing documents in Borginian? Yeah, I take care of anything that has to do with Borginian. Hmm, very interesting. Maybe she's just a fan artist. She's like, mm, there's this Borginian artist on the plane, and I'm gonna steal his art. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> sure. Actually, your on-the-job behavior makes you super suspicious in my eyes. Uh, but why? While Miss Tenero is busy with the passengers and all of her other duties, you have a lot of free time on your hands, thus providing you with ample time to commit the crime. Objection! Miles Edgeworth, I demand that you cease and desist in this line of conjectural questioning. I won't allow you to bluff your way through this like a certain defense lawyer! Ugh. But I do not honestly believe Miss Meal does any actual work aboard this flight. But that's not true, Mr. Edgeworth. Although, well... All I'm in charge of are the attendance room and some Borginian stuff. Hold it! So what exactly do you do as the one in charge of some Borginian stuff? Um, I do stuff like translate things from and into Borginian. Cammy's the only member of the crew who understands Borginian, Mr. Edgeworth. Miss Meal, I take it then that it is your job to process all the Borginian paperwork? Yeah! See, I totally pull my weight around here. So it would appear. Perhaps I should ask her a few more details about her work, and... Miss Meal, it's very unladylike to push suspicion onto someone else. That's not what I'm doing at all! I'm just saying that Miss Rhoda's very sus- There you go, pushing everything onto her again! Um, I don't get what you're saying. It must be a really abstract concept, huh? Hmm. The only thing abstract here is the landscape inside your head. Oh. I know you're suspecting me, but, like, I She's added... super suspicious. I'm, like, a sexy flight attendant. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's canon now. Yeah, she is. She's wearing pink earrings. And, like, the only thing that's covering, the, like, the upper half of her is, like, that scarf. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, the document. So that, the there, we have that in Borginian. I forgot Indian. about that. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of oh. Well, I can, like, totally fake a certificate, because I'm really good. In Borginian. So you are the only one in this flight crew that speaks Borginian. Is that correct? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess so. I studied abroad in Borginia for a while. If that is the case, then the signature on this document belongs to you, doesn't it? This is a falsified piece of documentation with only one purpose. To lead anyone who read it to believe that Mr. LeBlanc's statue was loaded in Europe. The only person who could have either prepared or processed this document in Borginian is you, Miss Meal. Without your participation, the smuggling of the Aleph Red could not have occurred. Don't sleep while I'm pointing my finger at you! Oh, I wouldn't dream of falling asleep on you, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> what is she smoking? It's not smoking, it's a bubble pipe. So when she when she was like, <sighs> with like all the bubbles, she was like just blowing bubbles. <laughs> you you also might change up the voice yeah. a little. But it sounds so funny to still have the right. same voice. It's exactly as you say. Are you confessing to having participated in the smuggling? No, far from it. It's true that I was the one who signed off on that document. But you can't use that fact alone to make your allegation. Allegation. I, allegation. allegation. I, just I just didn't have the A in front of it. Allegation of smuggling stick. <laughs> if there was no A, it would be yegation. Yegation. <laughs> yegation. <laughs> yegation. <laughs> There's no direct correlation at all. All you have is my signature on a piece of paper. Really? All you did was sign it? 
I neglected to check if the cargo had been loaded onto the plane properly. So sorry about that. Hmm. It seems that she's finally woken up. This is going to be one tough fight. Suppose... And this is just a supposition. 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 Even if I was involved in the smuggling, you can't throw the charge of murder on me just like that. Objection! If you were involved in the smuggling, you would have a strong motive to kill! Now Francisca's on our side. Agent Hicks was in the middle of an investigation regarding a smuggling ring. And just when he was about to close in, he's killed by a member of that ring. Well, did you ever stop to think that maybe Rhoda is smuggling is a smuggling ring member? After all, unlike me, Rhoda has access to many things on this plane for work purposes. Humph. So perhaps there is some element of a setup at play in this case. What are you talking about? <laughs> that face, though. Now, now she got rid of the whitening toothpaste. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> Don't worry, I wasn't talking about you. I meant the killer. First it was myself, and now it's Miss Tenero who is under the microscope. Seems to me that our killer is going to great lengths to pin the crime on anyone they can. You have no proof that Rhoda is set being set up, or that she isn't. Actually, I believe that she was indeed the intended target from the very beginning. Oh wow, I found Mr. Edgeworth in the elevator! <laughs> but like, she was the second person to find it. I believe that the plan was to push all of the blame for the crime onto her. And this evidence will prove my suspicions. Oh. This proves that the killer was out to frame Miss Tenero from the very beginning. Um, using her suitcase? Very good, Kron! Get this the heck out of it! <laughs> <laughs> this piece of evidence will answer all of our questions. Are you sleep presenting or something, Mr. Edgeworth? No, as you can plainly see, I am wide awake. <laughs> then I'm afraid you failed. You were making so little sense that I thought maybe you were asleep. Nah! Talk about a Dr. Sleepy Mrs. Hyde-esque transformation! <laughs> Is this it? But wasn't there a piece of evidence that's still unaccounted for? I need to stay calm, think carefully, then present the condemning evidence. The <laughs> suffocation! <laughs> Sorry, I forgot which safe state I was in. Uh, yeah. Take that. Suitcase. The killer could have hidden the body anywhere, and yet they chose the suitcase. Why is that? Perhaps it was to move the body from the lower deck to the first floor. However, why go through the trouble to do so? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That looks like- her, her bubble pipe now looks like a toy. Like, you know the- okay, you know those light-up toys at Disney where it's like, Come to the fireworks show! Get your Mickey that spins! <laughs> Come like, to church camp! Learn to kiss! <laughs> right, right, and it like- it like spins around, it's like, woo! Yeah. And it also, has like the lights. Don't That's rip the head off of the table. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> The only way all of these actions make sense is if the killer had wanted to frame Miss Tenero for the murder. Miss Tenero buys a suitcase on every flight she works okay, without fail. I guarantee if this girl breaks down, I'm just gonna be like, no, <laughs> like, <Nah>. like vocally, <laughs> no. But should her suitcase be switched with the one containing the victim's body, that would put her in a very tight spot. Unfortunately for the killer, the turbulence put an end to that plan. There wasn't enough time to put the body back into the suitcase. Ergo, they made do with whatever was at hand, adapted their plan, and tried to frame me as I lay unconscious on the floor from the turbulence. The killer then went to hide the suitcase in the in-flight shop, and brought the piggy bank back to the elevator in order to fabricate a false weapon. You're pretty dang smart! <laughs> a lot of work for a fruitless endeavor, wouldn't you agree? Also, that's why Cammy was like, I need to clean up the shop! Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like the killer had a tough time too, huh? I mean, why did the killer need to frame someone that badly anyway? That is because of the special circumstances surrounding this particular case. What special circumstance dictated the need for the killer to frame someone? Uh... Well... The murder still took place in the same place. When the murder took place... Well, it was... The murder victim was always the same. So I think it may have been when? Let's at least get rid of the dumb one. Okay. The killer was at a loss of what to do with Agent Hicks's body. But as it just so happened, there was a bunch of empty suitcases nearby. Being a skinny man, the killer fought to put his body in the suitcase and hand it off. 
You mean that a whole plan to frame someone was an elaborate coincidence? No, that's not what I said. You've wrongly deduced my meaning, Miss Meal. The one with the wrong deductions is you. Think before you speak again. Patience, Franziska! I'm just about to reveal the truth! What special circumstance? Was it when? The murder took place before the movie was scheduled to go on. Around that time, almost all of the passengers had returned to their seats. Therefore, the killer had to choose someone who was not at the seat to frame. Isn't that an example, uh, explanation for how the killer chose who and not why they had to? Well, I thought it best to start from there. If you're going to talk about some unrelated matters, do you mind if I take a nap? Hold on, I'm just getting to the meat of my argument. I just realized I'm slowly, my voice is turning into the weird whale lady from uh, Finding Dory. Do you remember her? Destiny! She Destiny? was the best character yeah, from that. Yeah, she was the best character from that, but I was like, whoa! Oh. Like, my voice is going everywhere, which is fun. The special circumstance is simply that the murder took place on a plane mid-flight. No matter which country, customs is quite strict in this day and age. So no matter what you do, the chances that the body will be found is very high. Therefore, there was no choice but to frame either Miss Tenero or myself. In other words, the only one who fits within the boundaries of the criminal's movements is not Miss Tenero or myself, but you, Miss Camille. Only you and you alone could be the killer. Oh, and... Are you done already? I was about to fall asleep again. Anyway, let's be honest here. You don't have anything on me other than a whole lot of circumstantial evidence! Nice whiny voice. <laughs> I can see the outline of how the murder occurred, but I have no definitive evidence. And isn't there a piece of evidence that's still unaccounted for? Something that I still can't quite fit into the big picture. What was that thing? 